uh, about maths. So is math difficult for you to learn? Mm. Uh, well, I suppose for some people, uh, math, math seems challenging because it takes time and energy. Uh, in addition, from the beginning, people are afraid that they can fail and uh, thus do not want to make efforts to understand it. Okay, so you can say not only does it uh, take your time, but it also takes energy. Then you will use inversion. Mm -hmm. Okay, or you can say it takes patience and persistence, which I lack. So there will be a complex sentence, um, right? Or you can say I have a quite, I have quite. If it's a, um, appropriate, you can say I have quite a shaky foundation. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, so when when you want to say that something is easy or difficult, you can say. Uh, ah, don't do that. Yes, uh, it's a piece of cake or it's a daunting task or a formidable challenge. I remember this topic was used in 2019 and one of my students said, uh, well, uh, although for many of my classmates it was a piece of cake, but it wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> right. So, um, and do you think maths is difficult in general? Mm. But I think it's some, some kind of related to the previous, because I was checking. Yes, the... exactly. At the exam, they will either ask you, is it difficult for you, or do you think it's difficult in general? Let's try to practice both. Mm, because I would say, I would repeat the same, which I... Let's try to repeat. No, no worries. Okay. okay, well, I suppose for some people, uh, math... Math uh, seems challenging, or I uh, know math seems uh, daunting task because it takes not only time but also energy. And in addition, from the beginning, people are afraid uh, that they can fail and thus do not want to make efforts to understand it. Mm -hmm. People are afraid. Now, what kind of people? Can you be more specific in your vocabulary? What kind of people are you talking about? Let's say university students, school university students. students. Yes, yeah. so if you if you are more specific rather than saying people, that that would be better. Um, okay. Again, if you use not only in the middle of the sentence, it makes no difference to your grammar score. But if you say not only is it difficult, if if you say it is not only difficult, it's it's just the usual sentence. You need to you need to use it before the subject to use inversion. Okay. So, uh, when did you start learning math, maths? Um, as I, I really remember, the first steps uh, which I made uh, towards maths were in my elementary school uh, when we all were studying uh, um, the multiplication table, uh, simple calculations and uh, solving the equations. Mm -hmm. A very nice elementary school where you learn equations, but that, that's OK. You, you mentioned topical vocabulary, so that's fine. Um, um, but it's so, not secondary school. I mean, in, from the beginning, when I started so in elementary. Oh, OK, uh, right. So here, another thing you, that you can mention. Well, you said vividly remember, so it means you remember ex exactly how many years ago that was. But if you do not, you can say it must have been around some time ago. You can use this model verb with perfect infinitive um, in your part two speaking. So it must have been around a fortnight ago or something like this. Um, but you can you could also have you could have used it uh, in this in this answer too. And you can also say I started learning maths along with the three hours of education. Do you know what, what it is? Three hours of education. Um, three hours. Yes, it's reading, writing, and arithmetic. Writing doesn't start with R. It starts mm -hmm. with W. Rith arithmetic starts with A. But it's like in Russian, we say три затрошника знал, сдал, забыл. So uh, there was a mayor of London several hundred years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And he proposed he uh, he was illiterate. He couldn't read or write. But uh, uh, once he proposed the toast and he said, "Let's drink for the three hours of education," because he was impressed that all the three words start with start with letter R. 
mm -hmm. after this, they call this three hours of education. So reading, writing, arithmetic, and uh, this is what you study in elementary school, and you can mention, you could also mention this. So do you like math? Mm, uh, I would say definitely yes, because solving math problems um, is extremely beneficial to the brain activity and keeping uh, those neuro neurons from aging. And moreover, science-related jobs, which uh, most uh, require um, math knowledge, will end up paying more. Okay. So uh, you can also say it enables me to indulge in some interesting uh, theoretical calculations. Uh, yes. Theoretical calculations. It's really exciting. Um, all right. Or oh, it gives us a guideline of how our universe works. So it, it sounds very poetic. Um, even though sometimes it puts an unbelievable amount of stress on me because there are too many abstract formulas to remember. So who taught you math? Mm. It was my mother first uh, uh, with, whom, with whom I tried to memorize the multiplication table and afterwards uh, math teachers in elementary and secondary school as well as private tutors whom I'm universally grateful for valuable knowledge, patience, and support. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can, you can uh, mention some elements of your curriculum uh, when you started. So I, I learned to understand, uh, the um, let's say, uh, identify basic shapes like squares, or triangles, and rect mm -hmm. rectangles. Um, then um, add and sub subtract. I don't remember if you mentioned this. You, you mentioned multiplication table, so add and subtract uh, with single and double digits. Okay, um, and perform more complex math problems. So mm -hmm. you mentioned equation equations, so maybe uh, you can say, and after this with my tutors we started learning, I don't know any, I don't know too many mathematical terms, but maybe something like linear equations what else is there in mathematics? Maybe you can select oh, some terms. Algori algori uh, algorithms. algorithms. Yes, algorithms would be uh, or logarithms. That would yeah, be logarithms. A, logarithms. That would be a nice, nice word if you pronounce it correctly. So it's this logarithm. So that would be nice. Okay. Uh, do you like to use a calculator? Mm. To be brutally honest, I'm working as a researcher and I'm used to analyze a lot of information so that before starting synthesis, for instance, I make some calculations uh, with the aid of calculator just um, to be on the safe side and do not allow uh, the errors to sneak out. Okay, so you can say it also enables me to well, then you can say something like um, to, well, let's say, to, for, to form monotonous calculations or to solve complicated uh, problems uh, and then say in a fast and effective manner mm -hmm. or to manage addition, subtraction, multiplication and division problem in a fast and effective manner. Okay, right. So what about part two? Which part two topic did you choose? Mm, it was about... Imagination. Imagination. Describe okay. when you needed to use your imagination. Um, okay. Um, all right. So describe a time you needed to use your imagination. You should say what you did using imagination, when it was, whether it was easy or difficult, and how you felt. Okay. So if you're ready, please start. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, uh, it's very important to make use of our sense of imagination uh, as it reflects our intelligence as well as creativity. I often make use of this power and uh, now I would like to talk about the time when I was uh, trying to develop my imagination. Since my school days, uh, I have a deep interest towards arts and crafts uh, and as a and um, as I really remember, I even took part in painting competitions at school level. 
It must have been a few years ago when my sister and I decided to visit a workshop uh, where we had uh, to give a full scope to our imagination. Uh, the task was to design um, a print uh, which, uh, which afterwards can be transferred into uh, the blank plate. Uh, for that, we use special dyes, uh, which uh, can be used for painting on glass and subsequent uh, roasting in uh, oven. Uh, from the very first minutes, I fully immersed into the working process and started to use my imagination and creativity. I carefully tried to depict uh, every element of my drawing which I kept in my mind. Um, during the entire time that uh, the workshop lasted, professional teachers not only guided us, but also gave valuable advice uh, on the work. For me, it wasn't difficult to use my imagination because since my uh, toddlerhood, I keen on creating and uh, visual visual visualization, visualization things. Uh, after three hours of uh, intensive work, we got our decorated plate uh, as a gift. Overall, uh, I believe that our imagination is highly related to our knowledge and experience, and it can often be power powerful uh, that we think it actually would be. Okay, so... Um... Let's think of, uh, of some complexity of vocabulary. How can a paraphrase really important? That was in the very beginning of your talk. Ah, yes, it's very important. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's crucial. Okay, what else? Mm, then... Vital, significant, Vital. paramount. Of the yes. utmost importance. So uh, there are there are tons of uh, synonyms, and whenever you want to say it's really important, uh, try to use this uh, one of these words. They are more advanced. They 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 might give you some credit for lexical resources. Then it wasn't difficult. What can you say? Uh, easy peasy. <laughs> You can, you can say, it wasn't a daunting task, it wasn't a formidable yes. challenge, it was a piece of cake for me, right? Um, now, I think you didn't even use any verb before keen, so since my toddlerhood, uh, well, maybe you wanted to say M, but you didn't, you didn't even use yes. a verb, it's to be I'm keen on, keen. but here it's, it's better to use present perfect, so I've been keen on, since my uh, childhood, I've been keen on, uh, creating something new. Okay, now um, band seven, you use less common lexical items, so you can use something like crucial per amount, uh, but also with some awareness of style and collocation. So maybe with believe you can use some collocations, like which collocations do you know? I wholeheartedly believe. Okay, why not? I, I firmly believe. Yes, I firmly believe. I wholeheartedly believe. Uh, why not? It, it, this is also a compound adjective, so that will be good for your grammar as well. So you kill can, two. So I can not only use this uh, in writing part, but it will not sound as kind of artificial. No, it's it, it, uh, it's okay to sound formal in your speaking, especially in part three, or in part two. It's also well in part one. If you are formal, it's not very natural. But part mm -hmm. three and even part two, you can use something formal, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's not okay if you sound informal in your writing. Uh, so in your writing, you need to be formal or uh, neutral. You can be neutral in your writing, but, but not informal. And in speaking, you can be informal in part one, neutral or even formal in part three. Mm -hmm. So because this is like um, part one is like talking to a friend, part two, uh, is narrating a story, maybe also to a friend or to an audience. And part three, it's like an answer at an exam to a professor. So if you're answering to a professor, you can, you can use formal language, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, 
but your the content of your answer is not evaluated. So you you're speaking on topics that are of well uh, that uh, more or less any person can answer. So your con the content of your answer is not evaluated, only the the form. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, now some part three questions related to this. Um, what can what kind of jobs require imagination? Uh, well, uh, I would say that uh, mostly uh, jobs related to arts and crafts, uh, they more required to uh, to use imagination and creativity in creation uh, uh, novel uh, cutting edge things. So, uh, in such jobs, you can come up with some kind of ideas, maybe with some new, fresh, or let's say unconventional, to come up with unconventional ideas. Here's a good collocation for you. Um, all right. Oh, it, um, maybe you could. Um, okay. So you uh, you work in research. So there probably there is not. It's not. It, it can be creative too. Yeah. Yes, can but it? but you should be more precisely, and I mean you cannot use too much imagination. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I think so, sometimes when you need to when you need to make an invention, uh, you need to be uh, creative, right? You can mention yes. this if you're comfortable um, talking about this. Personally, I would talk about marketers, uh, uh, marketologists. They need to come up with unconventional ideas to be able to sell a product or a service. They need to produce catchy headings in their advertising campaigns. They need to find fresh ways to communicate with consumers, right? Or teachers need to find ways to inspire their students. Maybe chefs, they cook, they need to create ingenious recipes and ways to present them. Okay, there are lots of lots of ideas here. Um, so, which requires more imagination, reading or watching cartoons? Frankly, Do you understand the question? Yes, uh, I would say, uh, from my point of view, um, uh, when you want to immerse uh, in some kind of novel in in novel or um, fiction li li uh, fiction literature uh, you can use your imagination Im imagination to uh, try to understand the, uh, what offers uh, wanted um, to To transfer which uh, emotions or um, mm -hmm. how okay. uh, images uh, images uh, to transfer images to readers. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. image. Uh, okay, so you can say it. the words, if you're talking about reading, nurture creativity. Also, reading a book allows the reader's imagination to take flight. It's kind of a idiomatic expression. Um, what else? You can say... Um, so it means to take flight, to, to, more, to develop more imagination? Uh, to, to, yes. To, uh, so you can also, reading requires active engagement and concentration completely absorbing the reader's mind and making them build images, thoughts and opinions in their heads or in their minds. Mm -hmm. okay. um, then what games require children to use imagination? Mm. Uh. I would say it's something art and craft activities uh, or mm, 
even for instance constructions or building in some small detail details for instance use a lego or uh, lego bricks Mm -hmm. So you could say uh, if, Lego, or, uh, try to use some uh, compound adjectives as possible. If you do it once in your speaking test, once in your speaking, once in your writing is enough. But uh, here's, a, here's a way. Um, you can say Lego or other construction type toys, construction type. So that will be a compound adjective. Right, so using pl plain building blocks of different shapes and sizes. Uh, here and yeah, you can also mention uh, role playing games. That's another compound adjective. You don't need too many, just you need to demonstrate that you can do that. Um, should young children use and develop imagination? Uh, I'm developing. Um, should young children use and develop imagination? Use and develop. Uh, um. Uh, I would say definitely yes, because um, probably they can, uh, even from the uh, childhood, they can create uh, and use the imagination in, cre in uh, creation of um, uh, new things, uh, which can be uh, can come in handy in the even adult life. Uh, and there are a play for examples when uh, teenagers develop uh, uh, and establish even the small startups that based on developing something with the imagination. Mm -hmm. So here, here are my ideas. So uh, the children will be able to ponder the future. It's vital for contemplating reality. They can advance, uh, well, uh, um, imagination, using imagination can advance cognitive development. And it enables kids to be able to cope uh, with uh, lives, and here's, here's, um, here's a collocation, with life's twists and turns. Uh, yes. So you can you can also say that um, in many different topics. Now, uh, how can teachers encourage children to use imagination? Mm, well, uh, I would say teachers uh, could um, uh, create. Uh, some you know, special tasks, not only special tasks, but also maybe, uh, maybe competitions among children that they could uh, try to compete with each other and create uh, and use the imagination for creating um, and solving some problem yeah. mm -hmm. or creating some decorations for example for new year um, celebration mm -hmm. okay so uh, here are some more ideas they can expose children to diversity in the classroom by using decorative objects they can allow flexibility in interpreting or well, something maybe like uh, books or they can present open-ended problems with the potential for many creative solutions. Okay, uh, or they m can maintain an attitude of non-judgment. So whatever the opinion is, it's just it's supported. Uh, of course, you don't have to include all these ideas, but these are quite uh, quite nice um, collocations here. So they can encourage group collaboration and teamwork, for example. Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, what is the relationship between imagination and creativity? Um, I would say that uh, this both uh, 
volatiles uh, they uh, go hand by hand. Hand, hand. hand they ah? go hand okay. hand in hand not by ah, ah yes so they go hand in hand i think without imagination maybe it will be hard to then implement something new uh, in reality and uh, vice versa creation also um, would help So when you compare something uh, yeah. for for your grammatical range, you can use um, uh, clauses of concession. So it's mm. words like while. So while imagination, blah, 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 creativity, blah, blah, blah. So you can say imagination mm. tells a remarkable story while creativity makes imagination possible. Or imagination is thinking of something while creativity is doing something meaning meaningful with your imagination. OK, mm. or you can say creativity relies on imagination. Um, just one more idea. So okay. It, it, hand and hand, right? R it, it goes, uh, you can say, well, something goes hand in hand. So mm. goes hand in hand with, or you can say just a synonym for this. Something is inextricably linked. Mm. Yes. Okay. So that is the end of your speaking test.